Good morning everyone and thank you for joining us. Today's webinar um, on why IT must stop with the power shift caused by digital transformation will be hosted by Matt Fisher, Senior Vice President of Product Strategy from Bytes' strategic partner, Snow Software. We also have um, Greg Hallam, our SAM Business Development Manager, who will be available for any Bytes specific questions, um, should there be any at the end. Before I pass you over to Matt, um, I would just like to run through some very quick housekeeping with you all. During the webinar, you will be muted, but you can submit questions at any time via the questions box on the right-hand side of your screen. There is a Q&A session at the end, um, so we can use a few minutes to answer any questions you might have. The webinar recording will be made available to you, and I'll send this out to you probably within the next 24 hours. And there is a very short um, feedback form at the end of the webinar, um, so if you could just take a couple of minutes to fill this in, um, it's very, very much appreciated. I'm just going to hand you over to Matt uh, from Snow Software, and I hope you all enjoy the webinar. Excellent. Thanks, Cassie, and good morning, everybody. It's uh, Matt Fisher from uh, Snow Software here. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us this morning. It's a pleasure and a privilege to speak to you. And I have to kind of fess up to start with that um, actually we've sold you a little bit of a dummy in that the title really should read why IT has to accept and manage the power shift caused by digital transformation. I think as we show today that there is this tidal wave happening that uh, you know, we're not King Canute, we can't stand on the beach and uh, demand the waves stop coming into the shore. What we can do is look at how we managed it and how we redefine our role across the organization moving forward. For those of you that don't know uh, Snow Software, we are top right on Gartner's magic quadrant of this year for software asset management tools. I say this year, it's actually the first year that uh, Gartner have uh, done that. And we help around 4,500 organizations around the world, organizations like Rio Tinto, Jaguar Land Rover, Boeing, Ikea, manage their technology spend across all their environments and different platforms. So let's start today with a figure, and it's, it's a pretty big figure, 1.3 trillion US dollars. Now, according to IDC, that's how much money will be spent on digital transformation projects in 2018. And that's a rise from 1.1 trillion in 2017. Now of this, around 662 billion will be spent on the technology that's needed to drive new services and products into the market. Around 332 billion will be spent on customer experience initiatives, what's sometimes referred to as omni experience, where you give the customer a common experience no matter how they engage with you. And then around another 240 billion will be spent on information and data. In fact, if we switch from IDC to Gartner, SaaS spend, so software as a service spend, over the next couple of years is expected to nearly double. Infrastructure as a service is expected to nearly quadruple, bringing those spends to around $72 billion and $76 billion annually. Now, this Increasing shift or increasing investment, I should say, in digital transformation is really causing something of a tectonic shift in how technology uh, is acquired, how it's selected, procured and consumed by the organization. And more than that, it's also driving a shift in who has the power to spend that money. And there's a, quite a lot of research out there at the moment. And depending on who you choose to believe, the figures now lie at somewhere between 40 and 60% of all technology spending occurs outside IT's control. Now, as I said at the top of the, uh, the presentation, I think the bad news for those of us on the call today is that I think that's an irreversible trend. We are going to see more and more of the technology spending power fall into lines of business or department heads or other business managers that uh, reside outside IT. And I think depending on whether you're a Trekkie or a Star Wars fan, you can choose the quote that uh, best fits your style, but it's either resistance is futile or it's pointless to resist. The point is that we need to do something about it and how we approach it will determine our success, I think. 
How did we get here though? Well, I think there's a number of reasons, something that we refer to as snow as the perfect storm. But for the purposes of today's narrative, let's explore three. So in the, fir the first one is in the good old days, by which I mean sort of 2012, when the business needed technology, it went to IT to get it, to help select the right technologies, to negotiate with vendors, procure the technology, to implement and support it. And IT was, much of the time, very good at doing just that. And it forced a close alignment between IT and the business. The problem seen by the rest of the business, however, was that IT said no too much. It said no when it was too busy to take on new projects, no when it didn't have the budget to support business initiatives, and no to new ways of working that it either wasn't able or prepared to support. And it wasn't just the IT, sorry, it wasn't just the business that got fed up with the IT department saying no, the technology providers did too. Software publishers and technology service providers are increasingly adopting a sales model that's known as ABIT, A-B-I-T. If you haven't heard of that before, ABIT stands for anyone but IT. Basically, technology providers know that IT asks too many questions, does too much due diligence, takes a more cautious approach to adopting new technologies. And, of course, IT doesn't have that cash that it once did. So those technology providers are increasingly turning to selling to anyone else instead. They sell to those that have the cash and are able to make quick decisions. And I guess the third reason that we're seeing the perfect storm is that those technology providers now have new ways to sell their ways, uh, wares and new ways to provision those technologies that don't require extensive and expensive on-premises systems. They don't require IT to provide resources and time to support deployments or insta installations. Those new cloud and mobile technologies are making it easier to provision products and services to the business that almost completely bypass the traditional IT infrastructure. If you've had any exposure to uh, Snow before, you may have heard of us describe something that we call the disruption gap, which is caused by the misalignment or the dealignment between IT and the business. And it's this disruption gap that really is the cause of major changes in your world. And it's easy to understand why IT would see this as a threat or is feeling marginalized. For a team that's used to having 100% control, it's a major shift. But the good news is that it's also an opportunity to redefine your role and value to the organization. If you can shift your mindset from demanding 100% control to instead aspiring to have 100% influence over how the organization selects, procures, and consumes technology, then you can redefine the value to the organization. In a way, it's ironic that tomorrow's IT leaders will not necessarily be technologists or even necessarily have a strong track record in delivering IT uh, projects. Tomorrow's IT leaders will be skilled negotiators, networkers, influencers and brokers, all very human skills that we don't necessarily historically associate with the IT function. It adds to the irony, however, that in order to develop these traditionally non-IT skills, IT leaders are going to have to have a higher dependency on technology than ever before. And specifically, the ability to achieve a consolidated view of how technology is being consumed across the organization and how to interrogate that data in a way that enables them to offer value to the many stakeholders that now hold an increasing percentage of that technology spending power. Knowing more about the tech, how the technology is being consumed by the organization will make the CIO and people like you the go-to guys for both the board and business leaders when it comes to managing opportunity, cost, and risk in both today and tomorrow's technology spend. The new normal is a network without boundaries, mixing legacy on-prem systems and hardware with new cloud and mobile technologies. We're using more kinds of devices than ever, more software from more publishers, and even a whole new host of cloud-based services.
So can the IT and the ITAM teams re-engage to add value to the business when an increasing number of technology decisions are being made outside of their control and visibility? Well, we believe the answer is yes. And there's something happening in organizations around the world right now that could just be the key to that re-engagement. You may have heard of the phrase cloud shock. It's the moment of realization that all those promises about cloud reducing costs and increasing productivity might not have been entirely true after all. It might happen after the first month, the first quarter, the first year or perhaps even later. But all that money being spent on cloud this and cloud that can't go unscrutinized forever. I'm sure you've heard of horror stories of businesses spending their entire sales force annual budget in a single quarter, or instances of Azure bills coming at 3x the anticipated cost. In fact, analysts conservatively estimate that most organizations are currently overspending on their cloud software and resources by 30%. To put that another way, if we don't do something to fix the problem, a whopping 44 billion of the 148 billion spent on SaaS software will be wasted. No wonder then that CFOs around the world are starting to demand action. And this is the great opportunity for IT and IT asset management to re-engage, to exert influence and add value. Let's have a quick look at two examples. So let's think about how we might manage that software as a service spend. Spend that's possibly outside of your uh, control and also outside of your visibility right now. Well, if we take Gartner, IDC and the others at their, their word, then around 30% of that money, that investment is being wasted. Now, we know that digital transformation isn't necessarily a cost-saving exercise, but we also know that most organizations haven't got 30% of their budgets to just throw away. So how can we bring down the wasted uh, spend, make sure that every dollar invested in SaaS is effective, and give business and IT leaders a consolidated view so that they can identify the overspend and do something about it? Well, first of all, we have to establish full visibility of the software as a service spend across the organization. We then need to pinpoint those SaaS services that perhaps represent the highest cost. We need to understand whether we have the right kind of subscriptions in place or indeed whether the subscriptions we have are even being used. We need to understand who are the culprits, and, and I use culprits in a jovial manner, across the organization. Who are the ones consuming the most, but potentially also wasting the most? And then we need to make this information available to the community of stakeholders that have a say in how that SaaS money is being invested. It isn't the case of IT demanding action or IT over, um, overreaching. It's a case of IT integrating and influencing the business, but based on a solid understanding of what's happening. So that may help us get a handle on our spend today. And then as we've seen in most organizations, SaaS spend is, is rising rapidly. In fact, one organization I, I engaged with at the beginning of the year, when I was dealing with their central IT team, that, that IT team said that they had five SaaS applications that were critical to the business, and they were the five that they were really uh, worried about. When we actually did some more due diligence and started tracking the SaaS usage across that organization, we actually found out that there were not five critical SaaS apps. There weren't even 10, 15, or 20. There were 76. So whatever you think your SaaS usage is today, the likelihood is that it's a lot larger because you don't have that visibility of the business unit spending. And notice I don't even call it business unit IT spending because I don't think the business sees it as IT spending. It's just spend. So to really manage things, we want to go beyond just managing the spend and actually get to establishing a level of governance over our SaaS spend. 
And why is this so important? Well, as we've seen, if you've got either manual or disjointed, by which I mean one department doing one thing, one department doing another and really not joining up, we, we end up in a situation where the SAS spend can be highly uh, duplicated, there's a high level of redundancy, and of course there's that 30% of overspend. Now that can also create risk, and risk obviously isn't just budgetary or financial, it can also mean using applications that the organization doesn't believe is right for them. And for organizations in Europe or, or working in Europe, things like GDPR, for example, really play into this. Do the SaaS apps that you're currently using actually comply with GDPR regulations? And it, does your use of those SaaS apps comply with GDPR regulations? So one of the things we could look at here is actually setting up things like self-service for SaaS requests or automated onboarding and offboarding, for example. It sounds like we're empowering the user, and indeed we are empowering the user, but we're doing it in a way that the organization is sanctioning, that is controlled by the IT function, even though the rest of the business feels like it is self-determining its needs. It also then gives us the opportunity to automatically re-harvest unused subscriptions, to downgrade subscriptions based on what the users are actually doing. If we're giving them all, an all bells and whistles subscription, but they're only using a small portion of the SaaS app, maybe that vendor allows us to downgrade the subscription to a, a less expensive version, therefore either freeing up that more expensive subscription for another user or providing a cost saving to the organization. We also see that with both SaaS, and this is relevant to IaaS as well, a lot of instances, uh, expensive instances, are spun up for an immediate need, and then it just goes back of mind. When that need is gone, uh, most users are not very good at going back to the organization and saying, hey, I don't need project anymore, or oh, I don't need that AWS instance anymore. So automatically uh, time-bounding those uh, those assets or automatically reharvesting them once you detect a, a slowdown or a drop off in the usage can really yield massive uh, benefits to the organization as a whole. And again, it's not going to be the business units that initially drive that behavior. This is where IT can add value to the organization, not by determining what the business can and can't use, but by helping the business really make the most out of those decisions and avoiding waste. Now this is a pretty complex slide and I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but how does Snow give you the ability to do that? I, I've sold a good story hopefully, how do we actually provide the technology to support that story? Well really, when, we comes to, when it comes to it, with Snow we're looking at two major inputs. The first is technology consumption, what technology is being used by the organization, and then second is business insight. What do we know about the business and how can we relay that against the technology consumption? So whether it's the on-prem systems, whether it's mobile desktop or data center, whether it's in the cloud, or indeed whether that usage is being tracked by third-party solutions like uh, Altiris or SCCM or what have you, we can bring in all manner of technology consumption into the Snow platform. And that box you see on screen called SRS is the software recognition service. And this is a little bit of the black magic that goes into the, the Snow platform. It's how we normalize normalize and rationalize all of that raw data so that it can be meaningful information for the business. In terms of business insight, there's a lot of different things that we want to know about in terms of licensing agreements, the devices that are deployed, what users sit where in the organization, what their roles or entitlements are in terms of what the business will support in terms of spend or access to subscriptions, all stuff that you can't automatically get from the vendors because it's your information, not theirs. We bring all of this together and the key thing is that the Snow platform makes it usable, uh, relevant to an increasing number of stakeholders across the business. Now it used to be in these olden days that we would just provide this information to a SAM manager or to a procurement manager and they would make very informed decisions about how the organization should behave, how it should invest its money. 
Today, that methodology doesn't work because the CFO, CIO, business leaders, um, application owners, that's where the real spending power lies. So we have to inform those guys with the information that's relevant to helping them make good decisions. And then once they made a decision, one of the things that we absolutely have to do is we have to automate the outcomes of those decisions. So we, we talked about automatically provisioning uh, SaaS subscriptions. Well, great, that can now be automated just this, this, the, in the same way that we can automate the reharvesting of applications from users' devices to free up licenses. But of course, to do that, we have to integrate with a number of uh, different systems. And those integrations are increasingly not just also on premises, but also in the cloud. Now that's quite complex. It's a lot to take in and, and I've gone through it very quickly. But the key thing is that we're dealing with more stakeholders than ever. More people have a say in how technology is spent and more people have to have insight into how technology is spent so that they can make the better decisions moving forward. If you're involved in software asset management, as I'm sure some of you are, then you know already about Gartner's nine key activities of the SAM tool, what sometimes is better, sometimes better known as DINROS, discover, inventory, normalize, reconcile, optimize, and share. Or indeed, there's also IT, ISO 19770-1. Great standards, advice, best practices, whatever you want to call it for software asset management professionals. But as, I, as I've just shown on that previous screen, this isn't just information for software asset management professionals anymore. This has to be consumed by hundreds, if not thousands of stakeholders across the organization. So to help these stakeholders engage with the process of selecting and managing technology and to help IT explain and, and uh, demonstrate the importance of that, that management, we've created a model that we call the four Ds. Now the four Ds is a universal methodology that we think applies to whatever the stakeholder is, whatever their role in the organization. First D is discover, understand what's happening. That can be tracking uh, on-premise software uh, consumption. It can be tracking cloud apps. It could be tracking how many mobile devices are being deployed and what are the apps on those mobile devices doing in terms of creating indirect usage against our SAP, Oracle, and IBM systems, for example. It's about understanding all of the raw information about technology consumption. The problem is that raw information is actually very difficult to understand. So that the second D is to determine what does that actually mean? What does it mean to the organization? And perhaps more importantly, what does it mean to my role within the organization? Therefore, the determined phase is actually slightly different for each of the, the stakeholders. If you're a software asset management professional, that normalization and rationalization of the software information plus the entitlements is super, super important. If you're a business manager, however, determine means something different. It means just understanding what access does your team have to certain technologies and how are they using that. And that really leads us into the pivotal point, which is the third D, which is decide. Armed with information, the chances are I want to decide something. And the, the decision might be to, to do nothing, in which case we're, we're in a good state, everything's happy, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to, to, to be going forward. More likely, however, our fourth stage is that we want to make or do an improvement in some way. And that's where, again, we come back to the automations and the integrations that I showed on the previous screen. We want to act upon the insight that's being presented to us and then take action. Now, a lot of organizations use a model very similar to this, this 4D. I mean, it's not a million miles away from some of the Prince uh, methodologies that are out there. But the key thing at the moment is that most organizations have an overly manual approach to the do. And therefore, for, for you guys in IT, it's creating additional overhead that is quite difficult for you to sustain, given this, the, uh, the current trends for downsizing IT departments whilst increasing the reliance on technology. So where we can, we need to automate the do as much as possible. 
so that we reduce that burden on IT and we deliver the benefits to the uh, organization much more quickly. Now, one of the bad things about the increased number of stakeholders that are involved in selecting and consuming technologies, we end up with a bit of a mess, as you can see on screen here. There's chaos on the screen. So how can we try to bring some order to that chaos and how can IT establish a, a pivotal, influential role in that chaos? Well, simply, we took our big red markers and we created three core groups of stakeholders, what we would in, in marketing terms call user profiles. Our first profile is the guardians, the guys that are really responsible for making sure that the proverbial doesn't hit the fan, for keeping the lights on across the organization, and for making sure that those technologies that are being onboarded by different parts of the organization actually drive the value that the organization wants. Now, SAM, ITAM, IT operations are classical guardians. But as we've seen, the guardians don't have an awful lot of money to spend at the moment. In fact, most of the technology spending power now lies with the decision makers. People like enterprise architects, uh, to a certain extent, the vendor management teams, business owners, could be VP sales, etc. You can see they all lie within that sort of yellowy orange uh, circle on the Venn diagram right now. They're the ones making the decisions, which are in some cases, as I'm sure you're painfully aware, making life quite difficult for the guardians. But ultimately, it's about our third core group, the consumers. How do we make sure that the call center staff, the field sales guys, the guys in support, the guys in manufacturing on the shop floor, how do we make sure that they are fully productive and using technology to the greatest uh, benefit? So Snow's approach is to identify these three groups and to provide solutions that are apt for each of the three groups. So for our guardians, it means having in-depth, detailed, analytical capabilities so that you can manage those vendor agreements, you can manage those software license agreements, you can, for those vendors that it's still um, appropriate to, manage your compliance risk or these days more likely an overspend risk. For our decision makers, they're not so worried about the detail, the ins and outs of entitlements or which uh, you know, version of, uh, of a BIOS is installed on which device. They just want better understanding of risk, risk in all of its forms, risk in a monetary form, how much of my budget is going on technology right now and is that budget being used effectively? Um, if I'm an application or a technology stack owner, how much risk have I got under the estate that's under my control? And I don't wanna have to go to five or six different applications to build a consolidated view of that risk. I want it in a single dashboard and that can be a snow provided dashboard. And then perhaps the consumers, well, they're not necessarily the most obvious uh, from a snow point of view, but actually one of the things that we're able to do through our platform is provide things like um, application, enterprise application stores. Um, app stores really are a great way of allowing um, our end users to self-service their technology requirements. But of course, the trick is that all those applications or services that are in the App Store have been vetted by the guardians and have been paid for by the decision makers. So although we're giving the consumers free reign to a certain extent to consume the technology that best fits their needs, that, that enables them to drive the greatest value to the organization, we're doing that in a very controlled manner that meets the organization's overall governance requirements. So to, to put that in context, for the guardians, it's about giving them the tools to discover and manage the consumption and spend, whether that's on-premise, in the cloud, mobile, desktop, data center, it doesn't matter. The decision makers also need to consume the output of the Snow platform, but in a different way. They want to manage their technology spend effectively. They want to see what they're spending. They want to make sure that when that CFO has that cloud shock moment that I talked about earlier, they're not in the firing line because they've got control of their AWS, their Azure, their Salesforce, their service now, whatever their spend is. And the consumers just want access to the technology that they need when they need it. So I think 
what we're trying to, to show here, if I zoom back to this one, is that we now have this mass of stakeholders, but it doesn't in any way, shape or form lessen IT's role in managing technology. It changes it, and I think it changes it forever, but armed with the right technologies to give you the visibility and the detailed and analysis that you need, suddenly IT can go to all of these other stakeholders here on the diagram and add value to them help them do their jobs better to make better decisions or to consume technology in an impressive, uh, improved or more cost efficient way by providing them with insight that none of these stakeholders have today. So I guess in summary, the, the truth is, yes, you know, things have changed. Digital transformation has changed IT's role within the organization. And as I said earlier, I, I think it would be a mistake to be King Canute sat on the edge of the beach demanding the waves stop. That's only going to alienate IT further than it, than it is today. In fact, let's do the opposite. Let's jump into the water and let's try and get an understanding of what's happening so that we can improve our people skills, deal with the other stakeholders across the organization and really drive value in that way. So that's the end of uh, the presentation. Thanks very much for, for listening. I hope it was interesting and useful. And I think, Cassie, we have a few minutes for Q&A. Thank you, Matt. That was great. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of questions that have popped up. So if anybody else does have any questions, please feel free to just pop them in the questions box. It should be on the right hand side of your screen um, and we can read them out for everybody. Um, so someone's asked, um, you describe a single platform approach. Does that mean that all different stakeholders have access to the same information? One for you, yeah, good one. Um, so, so, so no is the short uh, answer to that. I think the the pla you need to sort of separate the platform from the insight, if that makes any sense. The mm -hmm. platform is going to be creating and collecting, curating a lot of information. And I expect that most people on the call today are going to be curators of that information. But then they're going to look at the different stakeholders. And if you think back to that, that vendor diagram that I was showing, you can make some fairly informed decisions about, OK, what does that stakeholder need to know? Or what does that stakeholder need to know? So with the Snow platform, one of the things that we're able to do is create user or role specific views. And the, the guardians, if you like, as we describe them, they're able to control that flow of information so that A, the stakeholders don't get so much information that they can't actually uh, act upon it, but B, they get a filtered view that's relevant to their role, enabling them to make better decisions. Mm, perfect. Um, so someone's asked, what's the best way to forge relationships with those non-IT stakeholders that are increasingly controlling the technology spend? Yeah, so, so we talked about those human skills, which, which you know, for me is frightening enough, let alone somebody that, that comes from a, uh, you know, a deep IT background. We're not best known for our human skills. Um, I don't know how many people on the call know, but uh, Snow is a Swedish company. And, and in Sweden, there's a concept called Fika, F-I-K-A. And basically, Fika doesn't have any direct translation into English, but it, essentially it's coffee and cake. And the best way to go and build relationships is to talk to people, to invite them to coffee and cake, to have a little bit of a showcase of the information that suddenly is available to them. Let the technology or let the insight rather, that's a better word than technology, let the insight sell itself. But bribing people with cake is always a good way. <laughs> Certainly is. Um, another question, why should I care about SaaS and mobile spend when it's not on the IT budget? Well, I think, you know, cloud shock is going to change that in, in terms of I don't think it's suddenly going to come onto the IT budget. But the, the thing with cloud shock, and we've seen this um, in other organizations, is that when the CFO has that oh crap moment, we're really spending how much on, on uh, uh, SaaS or IaaS? Mm. The first person they go to is the CIO. And unfortunately, the CIO in many cases is completely blind to some of this, this spend. You may have heard the sort of the joke recently that uh, CIO now stands for career is over. And, and I think that's true when the CFO comes knocking and the CIO can't explain spend. So suddenly, I think what we're seeing in organizations is this realization that I may not control the spend, but I damn well have to have visibility of it. Otherwise, I can't add the value to the organization that I need to.
And that's going to trickle down from the CIO right through the IT organization. Mm. Perfect. Um, okay, so uh, that's all the questions that we've got for today. If do, anybody does have any question, questions at a later date, um, you can get in touch with your Bytes account manager um, or you can email tell me more at bytes.co.uk and we can put you in touch with um, a Snow representative, a Bytes account manager or someone from our very own SAM team who will be more than happy to assist you in any way that they can. Um, as I said, a copy of the recording will be shared in the next 24 hours so you can share that with um, your colleagues or, or re-watch it over if there's anything that you missed. Um, and um, just as a reminder, there is um, a feedback form at the end of the webinar I'll just take you a minute or so to fill that out uh, we do really really appreciate your feedback so um, thank you Matt for your time today and thank you everybody for joining us and I hope you all have a great day